Welcome to section 2.6, function notation and linear functions. All right, so function notation. Well, usually if you have the equation of some type of a function, for example, like y equals mx plus b, this is just a generic function, what you would do to indicate that this is a function, you'll replace the y value with f of x, okay? A function of x. So we'd rewrite this as mx plus b. So now you might say, well, why would we do that? Why would we replace y with f of x when y works just as well? The reason is so that when people see the equation, instead of having to figure out, asking ourselves, is that a function? If we see this notation here, f of x, we know it's a function. We don't have to check that it's a function before we use it. And that's really handy when you start doing math in some of the higher level courses. So instead of having to spend time checking, mathematicians are like, you know what? Let's just already indicate that this is a function to other mathematicians. Let's call it f of x. Now, f of x is very generic. You could call something g of x or k of x and so on. Okay, so please note, this is not g times x. This is just a notation called the g of x. Now, once again, this is a very sort of simplistic definition for the function notation. If you want to see it more detailed, please look in your book. So, for example, one, we're going to rewrite y equals 3x plus 5 with function notation. Go ahead, try that by yourself and check in with me. Well, rewriting it with a function notation, we're just going to identify where y is and replace it with f of x. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. We have f of x equals 3x plus 5. Now, there's something that we like to do with functions, which is called evaluating the function given the function notation. So we're given three functions here. We're given g of x, which is equal to this, f of x, which is equal to this fraction, and h of x, which is equal to 6. These are all different functions, so they have different function names, g, f, and h. Now, what are they telling us? Well, g of x says, if you input some x value, what I'll do with the x value is I'll multiply it by 2, and then I'll add 5 to it. f of x says, if you input an x value, I'll take that x value, add it to 4, and then divide 8 by that value. h of x says, if you input a number for x, you'll always get 6. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. Let me go ahead, erase those red values. Let me go ahead and re-highlight my functions. So basically, functions are telling you what to do with an x value. They're sort of like a set of directions telling you how to work with the value you're given. So let's see g of 2. So my x value here is 2. So this is saying when you see g of x equals 2x plus 5, we're going to replace x with 2, which means anytime we see x over here, we'll replace it with 2. So I see x right here, which means I'm going to replace it with 2. So then g of 2 is going to equal 2 times 2 plus 5. So g of 2 is equal to 10 plus 5, which means that g of 2 equals 15. And we box our answer. All right, let's take a look at b. b says f of negative 8. So now we're replacing our x values with negative 8. Let's take a look at the original function. So f of x equals 8 divided by x plus 4. So this is saying wherever we see x, we're going to replace it with negative 8. So let's go ahead and fill that in. So f of negative 8 is going to equal 8 divided by, and here's the x value right here by the x, sorry, by the plus 4. Replace the x with negative 8 plus 4. Let's go ahead and keep our work over here. So my arrow to show where I'm going. So f of negative 8 is going to equal 8 divided by negative 8 plus 4, which I can keep simplifying. So that'll be negative 4, negative 8 plus 4. And then 8 divided by negative 4. So f of negative 8 is going to equal negative 2. And we're done. Okay, let's take a look at c. c says h of 3. So wherever we see an x value, we're going to replace it with 3. So what was h? h is equal to 6. 
So h of x equals 6. So wherever we see x, we're going to replace it with 3. Oh, you know what? That's weird. There is no x value there. Well, don't worry. Remember, this is the constant function. This is the y equals 6 value. That's the horizontal line. We don't have the x value. The x values are any possible value. So h of 3 is just going to end up equaling 6. This is the constant function. Okay, so no matter what x value you input, the y value is always going to end up being 6. Kind of interesting. All right, let's take a look at example 3. Given the following graph of f of x, find the following. Okay, first off, let's go ahead and remember to put our arrowheads on our line. Okay, so we're given this graph and we want to find the following. f of 0. So what is this saying? Well, this is saying... When x is 0, what is y? Let's go ahead and put that in coordinate notation. When x is 0, my y value is what? Well, let's go ahead and figure out where is x equal to 0. x is equal to 0 here. So that's this point right here. That is 0, 2, 0, 3. So f of 0 must equal 3. When x is 0, the y is 3. Okay, let's find the next one, f of 6. Well, this is saying when x is 6, what is y? Well, let's look at that. So 6 comma what? Where is x equal to 6? x is equal to 6, ooh, right here. And that point is 6 comma 0. So when x is 6, y is 0. And the next one, f of 2. So that'll be x. So when x is 2, y is what? x is 2, y is going to equal 2, 2. Right there. 2, 2. So y is equal to 2. And, oh, wait, one real quick. Uh, your answer is this part. These items down here are just your scratch work. And lastly, f of negative 2. So we're looking for when x is negative 2. When x is negative 2, that's right here. So up here, negative 2, what? Aha, negative 2, 4. So when x is negative 2, the y is going to be 4. And that is that. All right, um, example 4. State the domain and range of the function from the graph above. Okay, so what would the domain be? Well, the domain, all of the allowed x values, well, my line stretches out from, it goes on and on in that direction and on and on in that direction. So that's going to be positive infinity and negative infinity. But we have to be careful here. I'm given the function f of x, so I need to write my domain carefully. I'm going to write dome of f of x. Okay, so that's the notation when you're working with a function for the domain. So the domain of f of x is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Please make careful note of that, especially for your exam. Please use the notation correctly. All right, now let's take a look at range. Well, those are going to be all the y values. So that'll go from the top to the bottom. So that'll be negative infinity up to positive infinity. Just goes all the way up. Once again, though, we need to use proper notation. So we use range of f of x. Some people write range, R-A-N-G, but I'll just be fine with range f of x, negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, that is that. If you need any help, um, feel free to stop by the office hour to go over some of this information, or just email me and we can set up another time to meet.